Alright, so the first thing I'm going to ask you is, how do you pronounce the fucking band name? Because apparently Josh said I, re I did it wrong because I don't know how to say it when I did it in my other video. Is it Malisium, uh, Malisium, or what? It's Malisium. Malisium, okay. Yep. I think the only person that's gotten it right that we don't personally know that we ever talked to in person is Ben Hardcore Keem, surprisingly. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but he butchered the song name, so... <laughs> <laughs> You know, he has, hard, he has a hard time reading sometimes, but it's all right. Yeah. All right. All right, so you just want to tell the people what your name is and what your role is in the band? Yep. My name is Vinny Anderson. I play drums in Melissium. How long have you been playing drums? Uh, honestly, since I was like two or three years old. My really? dad was a drummer. Yeah, my dad was a drummer, and I looked up to like Joey Jordison and stuff after... Right being obsessed with Slipknot at a really young age. Yeah, I didn't get into Slipknot until I was in, like, ninth grade. Yeah. I had cool parents, man, so... <laughs> yeah, my mom was mostly into, like, rap. She wasn't really into, like, classic rock or whatever, but she was mostly just listening to rap when I was growing up. So that's kind of what I grew up with, and then I just kind of got into stuff by myself. Yeah, my dad was, like, listening to, like, Morbid Angel and, like, stuff like that, and then uh, my dad actually brought home... Uh, Welcome to Our Neighborhood on VHS by Slipknot. And I <laughs> was just old school. mind blown. Yeah, I was just mind blown. There's like videos of me like sleeping on the drums at night when I'm like two, three years old. That's all <laughs> I want to do. My whole room was just Slipknot when Hip Raider was like a thing. It was cool. Right. Yeah. yeah. I didn't really get into drums until I was about uh, about 17 or 18 is when I got my first kit. What was I'm, it? I'm uh, 28 now, so I've been playing on and off for about 10 years. What was the first kit you had? Uh, I think it was like a, it was like a shitty red kit. I don't even remember what the hell it was called. I think it was like a, um, an Excel percussion kit or something like that. Nice. Yeah. Fun fact. Like actually, the kit that is in like discrepancy and uh, the malignancy music videos is actually the kit I grew up playing on. Yeah. So I've been had I've been playing on that kit since I was like, fucking super young. That's pretty dope. Yeah. So it was like hard to get a new kit. And Josh and everyone was like, dude, it's time to hang it up. And I'm like, no, man, come on. So I finally had to, and I'm like, disappointed about it. And hey, what kind of kit you got now? Uh, I got, I just got a, a Tama, um, I think it's a Swingster. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen those before. Yeah. Not too expensive, but still pretty good. Yeah. The price wasn't bad, I mean, but I, I, I couldn't break myself not to play on Tama anymore, and that was like the big, the right. big deal for me yeah I play on a Pearl export kit right, right now it's pretty cheap but just got it at the pawn shop for like 300 bucks so I said fuck it I'm not sure but I think the Pearl export like I think Joey used that for a little bit and yeah so I mean not. they sound pretty decent if you put some decent heads on them mm -hmm. as long as you like track them right and everything but what yeah. kind of symbols you play um I like to play on manual a lot oh yeah that's I, what I do mine all the way Yep, and then, like, I used to be about that Zildjian, but then I kind of switched over to Minel like about 10 years ago. Zildjian's crack on me way too fucking easy, man. Yeah, I know. Especially but if you're a heavy hitter. Yeah, they crack super fucking easy. I think the only Zildjian that I've had that's been like mind-blowing and amazing sounding has always been like the Oriental China. Right, that's like everybody's favorite. Yep. Mostly because of like uh, Texas in July and fucking, who is it, uh, August Burns Red. That was, like, the main China sound, like, back in, like, 07, 08. Yeah, I was gonna... I was, like, debating on getting one for the longest time because I had played on one growing up and stuff, and Austin, our guitarist, was like, bro, you need to pull the trigger on this. So I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. Let's pull yeah, the trigger. I've always, I've always liked those. Yeah, it just sounds amazing. Actually, right now, have you ever heard of uh, Stag Symbols? I think so. They're kind of like a Chinese brand, but they're uh, still made of, like, good alloy. But, uh... They're a DH China 19 I just picked up. Sounds really, really nice. It's like a huge sound, but it's like really crisp. So definitely uh, pretty good for their uh, their price. I think I only paid like 150 bucks for it. Yeah, I think I might be switching to Soul Tone. Oh yeah, I know a lot of drummers that play those. Those actually sound pretty good too. Yeah, they uh, they hit me up about a deal not that long ago. So that's pretty dope. 
they're giving me like a percentage off and doing like a I guess they call it like a custom line, but like it's just for me. You know what I mean? That's pretty dope. Kind of like a signature series or whatever. Yeah. That's so pretty I'm dope. Like really on that. They All right. So, them. what kind of uh, what kind of music made you even get into heavy music? Just Slipknot and other bands like that. Yeah, like I said, it was a starting point because my dad, Mike, he he literally it. I'd get inside the car with him. And I, I, so I grew up, like, listening to, like, I guess, like, Between the Baronies, like, Silent Circus and, like, right. Black Dahlia's My Asthma, which is, like, my favorite record by them. But yeah. it's well perceived nowadays. It's, like, everybody's favorite. <laughs> yeah. Great. And then, like, Everblack by Black Dahlia, too. Um, but a lot of Slipknot. Like, I like I said, I idolized them, like, growing up to the point where I have, like, an obsession amount of, like, material I collected throughout the years. Yeah. That was my first concert. Like I went and seen them um, here in at the XLR Center when I was like eight years old for the Subway Versus tour. Damn, and starting was, off young. Yeah, dude, I was crying and stuff because I was like, <laughs> Disneyland. My parents were like, "Finally, we're fucking gonna bring you," you know, because I was too young. Because I was like pissed at my parents. They didn't. They went and seen the Pledge of Allegiance tour without me. I was like five. They're like, "Bro, you're too young. Like you can't hang." So that's what got me into like that type of stuff and then like for like death metal and stuff like drumming wise uh alex pelletier from the spies icon yeah he's like one of my favorites even like air drumming to his shit makes my fucking hands like want to go oh. fucking numb oh yeah so like the spies icon when i found out about them also through my you know dad collection of cds and stuff i was just like fuck this so is your dad it is into all kinds of shit yeah i had younger parents so i mean like my dad was like the one that got me into like Despise Icon and like Cryptopsy, Dying Fetus. I seen yeah, that's Dying. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, dude, I seen Dying Fetus so many times because my father, he'd bring me to the concert. And the venue at the time was called Station Four, and like they knew me and my dad, so it'd be like a 21 plus show and like a 12 year old or 10 year old kids getting into it. Yeah. They would have an like a cool setup. It was like in a bar, and there was like a window they could look out and see the stage and shit. Right. So they're like like little chair set up for me and then like feed me waters full night <laughs> the cool thing yeah the cool thing was like back then when i was like really young i got to meet so many people because there's no backstage area so like i got to meet like corpse grinder and shit when i was like 10 years old and, and his he's like fucking <laughs> neck is bigger than your whole body yeah i was like looking up to him <laughs> but i was like go if you could buy him a pizza so i walked up to him i was like corpse grinder can i buy you a pizza and he's like <laughs> oh good thanks for checking us out and shit and i was like dude it's so cool you know <laughs> that's pretty dope that's yeah, pretty... So, so you started yeah, going to shows and everything early age yeah you know like because like i said i had younger parents so i mean like my dad you know like that's something that we bonded over was like heavy music and like drumming and stuff like that and uh so i've seen like a lot of bands back in the day like i got to see the faceless i mean when like Planet Dury Duality just came out. Yeah, I think so, I saw him about 2008. Yeah. 2008, 2009, I think I saw him the first time. And then, like, Obscura back in the day. And, yeah, I seen Black Dahlia. Then the first time I got to see Black Dahlia, though, was when they're like, they just came out with Def Right. So I seen, like, a shit ton of bands back in the day. It was great dope. Yep. All right, so uh, the EP came out last year. But uh, you guys writing anything uh, new right now? I know all this COVID shit's kind of uh, putting everything on hold. So is that really affecting like you guys writing any kind of music? No, not really. We've been we've been really striving on writing, and uh, we have one song that's like completely done because like a bunch of them are just like ideas right. that we put together and shit. But um, the new material is definitely, I guess, a step up from the EP. Yeah, is it still gonna be like uh, more atmospheric and like slimy? For sure. We didn't we, we didn't get rid of uh, if anything, it's more atmospheric and more slammy. Like we wanted to like the EP was like well prescribed because like we thought we're gonna put out this and maybe like our friends would like dig it and shit and like that'd be cool. But then there's like a bunch of people that we found out that are like not from Minnesota that yeah. like enjoy it stuff and they all love the atmospheric and that type of stuff. So we literally it's like grabbing the EP but like taking it cranking up to like 11 right josh's vocals on it are fucking insane like he he's not just doing the standard lows and standard highs now he's like mixing it up because 
while pushing each other as musicians on it. So yeah, that's how you gotta do it. I've known Josh for maybe like about four or five years, probably, just from uh, being admins or whatever on Epic Breakdowns. Yep. And I never really even checked out the band until like last year when you guys came out with the. Uh, I think it was Discrepancy. Uh, I think you came out with that video, so I, that, I think that was the first one I actually checked out. Because I uh, put the other song previously in a breakdown video for, mm -hmm. um, what the hell is the other track? Malignancy? Yeah, the one that he couldn't say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was the first time I heard it. I was like, kind of, it kind of reminded me of like uh, a GN or whatever, if you guys know them. Of course, you probably yeah. know them. Josh is obsessed with those. Yeah, I know. He's like, it's like, it's like his favorite band in the fucking world. That's all he ever posted was like a G and stuff. Dude, you should have a conversation. If you have a conversation with that kid about like heavy music, that's like one of the bands he's going to mention like 10 times. Yeah, and I tried to do like a dual cover before. He's like, well, I'd do a dual cover if it was like Despised Icon or a G and. Yeah, yeah. Other <laughs> bands or what, dude? Like, I don't know, like, and especially that band, Asian, like, they don't, they're not really that well known, but Josh has like legit, uh, fucking wall flag like shit ton of shirts and shit yeah, no, he's got a shit ton of crap from them they're actually from my state too Indiana, they're right? about two hours away from where i live at yeah so Josh. they've been around they've been around since like i don't know 2009 2010 or whatever when their first ep came out so they've been I around for a while i can't remember the first song i heard about them, but it's like they're big they're like first big song and i forgot the fucking record name but it has like a i think like a dude that's like a goat or something colliding with something i can't remember honestly yeah, i think uh what was that it was ex exponential or something yeah uh, something with that in the fucking title i remember it's been too and long then their new record is uh the drummer they used to be in a band called by the thousands that plays here he used to be the drummer of them flew down to cali and like recorded with them and shit so it's just a small world i guess yeah no it's pretty cool yeah. So you guys, uh, you guys working on a new album or like a debut album? Are you just gonna put out a single or what's going on? Um, right now is what we have um, in the works. We have a, a single that's ready to get. Um, we're gonna be setting out to get mixed and mastered pretty soon. Um, but yeah, we're we're leaning more towards like an album. Right. Is uh, we just you know we're taking our time with it. I mean that's one thing we learned on the EP. We didn't take as much time. Like we were just like, dude, that sounds fucking. Dank. Let's like, let's go. You know, like this yeah. time now, we're like now we're like that sounds dank. Well, let's build off it. You know what I mean? So it's like a, we're really challenging ourselves. I think this is like the natural progression of music, anyways. When you're writing, you just kind of see something that you can change or whatever. You come up with another idea, you just throw it in there. Yeah. This yeah. Kind of make you go over it like more than one time. Instead of like, oh, it's fucking dope. I'm about to put this shit out right now. It's about to be super heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and then you like, you know, like, that's how it was for the EP, it was like, this sounds dope, you know, let's, let's, let's record it, let's get the shit taken care of, well now it's like, that sounds dope, let's listen to it for a couple of days. And really yeah, you gotta let it simmer sometimes. Yeah. So with all this coronavirus, even though you can't really say that shit around on the fucking YouTube, but with all the coronavirus stuff, uh, has that like, um, stopped you guys from doing anything, like, has it canceled any of your tours or any kind of shows? Coronavirus has actually canceled every single show we had lined up because we had a uh, we had um, re the reflections like reunion show and that got postponed and it got rescheduled and then we had fucking dope. yeah but I mean it got rescheduled so it it's in August now I think it's like August sixth or something like that right they're really adamant um, <clears throat> on making it happen and then um, we had two dates lined up with Enterprise Earth. Um, which was like Iowa and Lincoln, Nebraska, and then that got completely canceled. I'm not sure if that's even going to get rescheduled, which is really like heartbreaking to us. Yeah, everything's kind of like up in the air right now, anyways, just in general. Yeah, I mean, we haven't met up to like practice or whatever. I know that um, me and Austin, the guitarist, are going to start like uh, pretty soon. You're like start video chatting. That's pretty and, like, much what you got to do nowadays. Video chatting and writing that way, you know, but you've never done anything like that, so that's gonna be new. And you guys usually like write music together in the same room or whatever, or you guys kind of do it separate, yeah. Or like when somebody has an idea, they'll like record it and send it, but I mean, like, yeah, you know, so it's like a very different it, it definitely changes a lot of shit, 
with that going on right now and and in, like a a lot of bands like i feel bad like that tour for their you know for their life now yeah, their actual job and their actual income yeah so now they got to resort to like online merch sales and streams and stuff like that which helps out a lot you know right still not the same thing it shows though yeah yeah and then ticket I, sales I, I and all that yeah i didn't know like streams on spotify and youtube like were like such a big deal until um we put out our ep we probably put our EP and then we're like, oh, you have this much in your distro kit. And we're like, what? You actually get money from this? Like, I, I was like, my whole life's a lie. <laughs> I if I just scams people. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And everybody's got to get their own cut. That That's just right. the thing with music nowadays. You just kind of got to go with it. Unless you do like everything independent. You just It's just hard to put yourself out there anymore because of all the, uh, obviously, influx of bands like everywhere you look. Yeah, like there's a new band on Slam Worldwide every two seconds. Yeah, no, it's like every time they put up a new video, it's like a new band that's putting out their like debut single or something. Yeah, so it's kind of hard to keep up with bands nowadays. So it's like when you were younger, you found out bands from like shows or like stuff like that, and now it's like in your face nonstop, you know? Yeah, pretty much when I found out bands, when I was like back in like 2007 or eight. the only way I found out bands was going on breakdown videos and watching like breakdown compilations. There's that too. That was like you know. the biggest way I found bands. Well, I found out bands when I was really young too because like MySpace. Yep. When it's just like still popping. I found yeah, out like good old times. But you like I found out like obscure bands like you were like the band called See You Next Tuesday. Yep, I remember them. I, found I, out, I think I seen them live in like '08. I think. Gosh, that'd have been so sick. I don't remember anything about the show, but I just remember seeing them fucking local because they used to have a, a a venue in town where they would have a lot of uh, shows come. But uh, that venue got shut down, so we really haven't had any shows for like the past like five or six years, probably. And then I, and then I found out uh, Salt the Wound, which yep, is some... I saw them uh, 2011, I think, at Jamboree in uh, Ohio. I think aren't they from Ohio? I think they are from Ohio. Yep, I'm pretty positive they were. I saw them like, on one of their last shows. I think they said it was. It was like 11. Yeah, oh, man, that would have been so fucking sick. And then like bands like the Red Shore and shit like that. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I ever saw them. I think I saw the Red Cord or one of them. I think the Red Shore is from Australia, weren't they? Yeah, the Red Cord, I fucking love them. I never the Red Cord's like death metal band. Yep. Yeah, I think I yeah. saw them back in the day. I don't think I saw the Red Shore. And like Josh for a Cowboy and stuff like that. I mean, like, there's a lot of bands I found out from MySpace, ironically enough. Yep, that's how. I mean, even if you, like, added some new friends, you just went to their profile, then they have, like, a little song down mm-hmm. at the bottom. That's how I found out of some bands. Yep, and then like you said, like the breakdown videos and stuff. But I mean, like that's why I mean, like times have changed now. It's you don't necessarily people don't necessarily have to dig for bands now. Now it's yeah, like you know, it's just like right in your face all the time. Yep. It's like oh, here's a new band, here's a new band, here's a new band. Then you can just pick and choose what you like. Yep. Yep. And which is good for bands, but then you still get lost in the sea of all the other uploads of bands. It's very hard to stand out, you know. I mean, times change where you, you just put out music, you know, with the internet, you can make an online project or whatever, like I'm doing, and uh, you're not, you don't even have to really meet each other. You can just make the music and put it out, and then you can, you know, get big or whatever. Because actually, like what the Infinite Annihilator did. Yeah, there's quite a few bands that do that. Like, I didn't know that, like, um, Slaughter Veil's one of those bands that do that. Yep. Like, it's insane to think, you know. Yeah, they got super big, super quick, too, because of Alex. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was doing, wasn't he doing, he was doing, like, YouTube covers, like. Yeah, he was doing a lot of YouTube stuff. Same with Ben Dewar, I do believe he was doing stuff like that, too. Yeah, I, f- I found out about him before he started uh, the, sh- the Shadow, or, I think as everybody found out when he did that one clip where he did all the different vocal styles before the breakdown, I think that's where, yeah. like, most people found him from. Yeah, people were, like, fucking mind-blowing. That that clip is still mind-blowing to me, to this yeah, day. That's crazy. Fuck. And of course, Josh is like, yeah, dude, me and him have chatted before. Let's get him on a track. I'm just like, what? Yeah. Yeah, it's always it's always cool to make fucking friends and get some guest vocals. Yeah. You guys trying to get some more guest vocals for the new album, or are you just going to, Josh going to do it all himself? Are you guys going to try to get some more? I, mean, I think we might actually try to get some more. I mean. Because I know the last one, uh, you guys had Kyle Anderson from, uh, was it, Brand of Sacrifice? His vocals yep. are just fucking disgusting. 
Yep, and it was like a cool opportunity that we had too because uh, we did that two-day run with Rings of Saturn last year, and obviously they were on the the tour. Right. And it sucked because like in Minnesota he was like sick, so he couldn't do it. But he's like, I'm gonna make it up to you guys. I'm gonna do it the next day. So it was like really weird playing playing that tune, and then all of a sudden like you look up and you're like, this does sounds a little different. You look up and then it's like Kyle and Josh on stage doing their parts. And just like yeah, it's fun. pretty crazy. It's sick. Like what's after happened. all this coronavirus bullshit, you guys planning on getting back on tours? Are you guys just gonna resume the tours that you guys had? Or are you gonna try to find some more? We're gonna try to find some more. I mean, we're in the process right now of like actually legit buying a van. So that's the only thing that's like stopping us. Right. Um, at the moment, otherwise like renting vans are kind of not cheap, but yeah, they're it's not super expensive. <laughs> so I mean, like once we once we get that going, then we're gonna be on the fly all the time that's what we're trying to plan on doing yeah, it's know. like the main thing getting transportation that rent chick is way too expensive Especially oh yeah you gotta rent a trailer also for your you know whatever your guitar cabs or your drums or whatever and like the the, the rings of saturn the two-day thing we did with them we didn't we had like a what was it, like a 15 pastor van or something so we just literally took out the back seats or you know you couldn't that's right you couldn't so we had to like stack shit on the back seat we're all crumped up and we're like oh this is great you know <laughs> fucking in well, the cramped I, and shit yeah we didn't sleep because we we're all fucking excited to play and then we ended up playing in Milwaukee and we we're just drained yeah that has like, to be drained we, we, we still get excited about every little fucking thing you know like little fucking school girls we get excited we're like oh my god we're going on a state for the first time it's so fucking cool you know what I mean that's the dream walk, right there. Yeah, we walked to the venue, we're like, whoa! And then the fun fact on that the x-ray, we walked in there, it was like, I asked the, the dude that works there all the time, I'm like, so the kids get a little rowdy here, and he like points at a wall that's close to the stage, and he's like, see that hole in the wall? And I'm like, uh, yeah. The dude's like, that's that's uh, a couple weeks ago from when Acacia Strain was here. <laughs> and we got thrown in that wall, and we're like, this is so sick, bro. <laughs> That. Those, those two dates were kind of like weird and messed up because like our backtracks because we didn't know that like newer laptops have like a, a anti-drop in them or something yeah that's weird yeah so like when we do like do our samples and the vibrations on stage the laptop would feel would think it's dropping so it'd lock up save all the memory and then shut off all right yeah, yeah so that's fucking weird great first time playing on a state and we got to play without backtracks or anything that got Austin knows all the leads and all like the fucking stuff that he did on guitar and shit. So that was great. That's how it goes sometimes. I think I saw Black Tongue when they came here on their first tour, like 2000, uh, 2014 or 13. And uh, in the middle of their set, they were playing in like a tiny ass little bar that was probably like uh, 15 foot by 15 foot little space. And they were playing and the fucking bass drop went off. And then like the entire power and the entire place shut off. So they were just sitting there for like 10 or 15 minutes trying to get the power back on. And I think it was uh, Dealey Plaza was on that tour also. Yeah, and then when you think about... It, I mean, as a band, when, if that would have happened, I'd be like, dude, I'd be like the sickest bank drive, dude. <laughs> Stoked. It's, it's pretty funny, though. Yeah. It happens a lot, I guess. Like, when I seen Victims when they played in Minnesota, their backtracks were completely fucked. So, I mean... It, it happens, but I mean, it's like the odds of uh, it happening to us the first time we go out of state. Right. It was fucking man. This gives yeah. you a fucking story to tell anyways. Oh, yeah. It's all about the adventure. Yeah, that's what it was. All right, so that's pretty much all the fucking questions I got already. I was just kind of flew by right there. <laughs> 25 minutes. Yeah. All right, so you want to say anything else to the people watching? Um... If you haven't checked out my band, Melissium, please do so. You know, EPA. I see him posting on all the groups all the time. Check out my, my band, Spotify. Hurry yeah. up and check it out. Yeah. Get the word out. Thanks again for the interview.